And now, Horse Talk Live on Rural TV. We will get down and dirty uh, talking about today's uh, guest here. And one of the issues that a lot of horse owners have to face when it comes uh, spring and summertime is dealing with bugs, flies, all the insects that seem to be attracted to our horses. And everybody knows that it can be quite annoying when you have to worry about mosquitoes and flies bothering your horse and your horse is agitated. So it's something that everybody's dealt with. We've had uh, you know, tons of different products out there to try and help us rid those flies. But today we have Fly Armor on Horse Talk Live. So without further ado, welcome to the show, Charlie O'Hara and Fly Armor. Thank you, Lizzie. It's uh, really exciting to be here. Um, Fly Armor is a, it's a new product to the North American market. It's been the result of about two and a half years of serious commitment to research and testing. Um, over the past two years, anything from trail riders to racing barns to farms to show jumpers, uh, ropers, you name it, we've had an opportunity to listen and get feedback from the different consumers who've messed around with our product. Yeah. Um, we're excited because we think we have something that's kind of a breakthrough, but it's also very simple. If, uh, if you've ever lit a citronella candle on your picnic table uh, to keep bugs away while you're eating dinner, right. you'll be able to relate to how this product works and um, how simple it is. Yeah. The, the challenge was to figure out how do we get our idea and make it horse friendly, mm -hmm. um, make sure that it's safe and effective, and at the end of the day, make something that's affordable and enjoyable to use. Um, our, our products all feature a, a patent pending technology. We call it a pocket and pad system. Okay. Um, if I can, I'd like to show the product. Please do, a bit. yeah, let's show our viewers what um, we got. Each one of the different units, and this one you can attach to a stall door or to a sports medicine boot but they all feature a basic pocket that is made of a, of a couple of different materials. This is a, a very strong uh, plastic material on the outside that's used in things like uh, outdoor banners, for instance, and, it, and we've punched holes in it to perforate it. Okay. The backing, this, this material here on the back of the unit, you can see is a, it's a non-leaching, uh, three-layered product. We call it va Vapor Guard. And it protects the animal's skin. Okay, so that the product isn't coming in contact necessarily with the horse, then. Yes, it's gonna. It's either gonna come in contact. The product will lay either on the animal's skin or onto the tack that okay. it's attached to. It can be attached to a halter or a bridle. Inside of the pockets are composite paper material pads that have been infused with. Um, all natural essential oils. Okay. Uh, if you're familiar with those citronella candles, then you can understand what citronella oil would be. It's a very strong, I'm gonna open one just to, to let you smell it. <laughs> Sorry um, for those of you at home can't smell it, but. These are uh, filled with citronella and Ooh, cedar wood. Wee. Yeah, it's not unpleasant though, it's actually kinda nice. It's, uh, it's a very potent product because we're using the pure oils. A lot of products for fly control for horses over the past few years, it's become pretty popular to have natural ingredients in the mm -hmm. shampoos and sprays that we use, but you're talking a quarter of a percent or a half a percent, most of it's in there, I think, to make the consumer feel good about doing something natural. The challenge is, once a horse gets dirty, sweaty, or wet, almost almost anything that's on the skin is rendered useless. They, they just don't have that the effectiveness. Whereas this product, the hotter it gets outside, the better it works. Um, our, if, you, if you can imagine this product, um, the one that I have on the nose band here, mm -hmm. a horse is out in the pasture wearing one of these, and you have the ability to um, have the heat influencing the oils to create a cloud that basically protects the animal. Um, the concept that the hotter it gets, the better it works. It doesn't make the horse hot per se, okay. because most of the, the time the product's attached to tack and the product breathes well enough, so. Well, that's interesting that the hotter it is, the better it works. It's really important um, because that's when the bugs are the worst, especially here in the South. You know, it gets pretty dang hot, so. Yeah, we've found uh, that's probably the calling card of the product right. is, 
you know, where the other products seem to break down and fail, our product is just catching just its started. stride. <laughs> yeah, it's just getting started. And uh, it's, it's been a really amazing thing. I, I, I do want to make sure that, I, that, the, that everybody understands what you get when you okay. buy a product. Our products come in a kit form in, inside of these red bags, which are resealable. We didn't understand how important that was until after we were on the market. We just thought the package looked cool and that it could either stand or hang. Yeah. Um, at the first place that we introduced product, um, one of the trail riders started putting the product back in the bag at night and resealing it. And we found that our product lasted a lot longer. The, the, the sticks themselves, if you're using them 24 hours a day, seven days a week, we are consistently getting four weeks of wear out of the product in extreme That's a temperatures. Long time. Yeah, it's it's pretty exciting that the longevity of the product. What you get inside of the bag is the the piece of gear. In this particular case, this is a what we call a brow band. Mm -hmm. You can see that it'll attach over the brow of the horse. Okay. Basically you take um, the the replacement insert package and you open them and you'll slide the pad basically right into each pocket and as simple as you know opening the velcro and wrapping it around the yeah. bridle that's how simple it is to okay. be off and going um, and then based on what you're going to do with your horse will determine you know what type of gear you would use we currently uh, have 11 different products available for horses dogs and humans okay. we're just coming out with our first uh, human product all right well we we're going to take a little bit of a break here charlie and we'll get back to more learning more about fly armor and what it can do for you and your horse keeping the pesky bugs away while you're riding or while your horse is out in the pasture it's something they won't have to deal with uh, thanks to fly armor's new invention here so stick around we'll be back with more on horse talk live my name is loretta I'm assistant trainer for John Kimmel. We're here in Saratoga Springs, New York. I've been trying the fly armor on my pony here, Cisco, who's an ex-racehorse, and he is loving it. Before, I used to have to wear the, um, I used to call it the doily, where it would cover his ears and his head, and he wasn't really happy with that, and I think it was very hot and a little sweaty. So this has provided an excellent way of keeping the insects from annoying him so he can better do his job. Cool. So we're very pleased with the product and highly recommend it. What do you notice about it around the barn since it's good while you're on the horse and he's out there doing his job? What do you well, notice? When I, when I get off him in between sets and I rest, he gets a rest and I hang my bridle on my saddle horn here. And it keeps the bugs away from him during the time that he's in his stall as well. So it's, it's out on the track and as well as in his stall. He's comfortable and happy and Happy horses can do his job much better. All right, welcome back to Horse Talk Live on Rural TV. I'm Lizzie Iverson, and the video you were just watching is a happy customer of Fly Armor, a new development in fly protection. Everybody is familiar with fly spray and some of the wipes that we've had in the past years, but Fly Armor has developed something new. And with us today is Charlie O'Hara. Um, Charlie, give us a little backstory about where fly armor came from, who's involved, and and everything like that. Well, it's a, it's a fun story. It's a neat story. I have a, an older brother who I've obviously known my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> John, John O'Hara, he's based out in Southern California, and he's been in the thoroughbred industry for over 35 years, ranging from being a trainer to um, doing what he's become probably the most well-known for, which is consigning and buying horses and then selling horses. And uh, John has been a part of a lot of really great horses uh, in their careers, finding them as, as yearlings up, at, up in Lexington, Kentucky at the sales and developing them, um, break, getting them broke properly and okay. basically teaching them how to be racehorses. And um, a couple of years ago, John, I guess, got an inspiration um, <laughs> that he could find a better way and develop a better way to, um, to protect the horses, to make the horses more comfortable when they're being attacked by flies. Yeah. And as simple as that concept is, um, one, th <laughs> one thing you have to know about John is he is a skeptic. He is a horseman and most horse people are skeptics. I, um, I've always enjoyed the selling side of things a lot more. John um, goes to these yearling sales to 
you know, go through a checklist of things and most horses get knocks against those checklists. So that's kind of the mentality or the spirit that he came into developing his first product. He's 54 years old and this is a whole new uh, shooting match, let's yeah. just say. Um, the idea of developing a product, if you think about it from A to Z, there's a whole lot that goes into right. a, a good idea. And um, there are so many parts of John's history that have played a role in this that are, are interesting. In fact, um, probably the center point of this product and its effectiveness is the blends themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, the ingredients that go into the paper, the paper pads, there were probably 15 different blends of oils that we used to test. And the way the, the world sometimes works, one of the people, one of the groups that bought one of the horses from my brother John's consignment a few years ago okay. happened to be a chemical engineer named Monty Ross. And Monty, um, he um, has developed shampoos and perfumes and been involved with all kinds of human use products over the years. And he, uh, <laughs> he, he started working with John and developing blends and we learned a lot about these oils. Um, because the oils never went on the skin before, you know, if you used citronella or cedarwood directly on an animal's skin, you can cause skin irritation. Okay. So we had to be really careful with um, making sure that we had a product that, one, would stay in the pads well uh -huh. without running through the material and leaking, getting, leaking okay. onto the horses. And believe me, we went through a lot of trial and error there. I had... Uh, one oil that we used, eucalyptus, that runs almost like water at 90 degrees, and in the middle of the summer testing, That's we got, good. yeah, <laughs> our phone rang off the hook, but not for the good reason. <laughs> but um, we did a lot of testing to find out what would work, and I'm really excited to know that after six weeks of testing last fall, not just in Florida, but also over in the Middle East for some new products we've been developing with a co-brand, um, very excited to share that even in the Middle East, where it's 100 degrees every day, yeah. our product is, is standing up to that extreme heat, which is wonderful news. Um, the, the flash point, and that's the point at which the, the product would actually run, the flash point on our current blend, the blend that we're using on all of our outdoor products, is um, between 170 and 200 degrees. So it can withstand quite a bit of intense heat. You bet. Um, you know, so much of uh, dealing with horse people, you got to be a good listener or you're not going to be in it for very long. Um, we, uh, John, when he first started uh, with me about a year ago, he shared that what he really believed he had was a product that could be used strictly for riding and that endurance riders would really like this or people like Loretta, who was in the, in the video that we just watched, someone who's on a pony all day at a racetrack, it would really make a big difference for people like that. What we didn't understand is once you get into an enclosed area, how big of a difference this would make. The first place that we brought the product out to the public uh, was the Equine Expo out in Sacramento last June. And um, one of the purchasers, a woman named Pam Bailey, who I think we have a video of later in the show. Okay. Um, Pam after a couple of weeks, uh, shared with John that the product was, was wonderful and that it lasted so much longer than the four weeks we claim. Um, she found that if you put it back in the bag at night and reseal it. But we also had... Uh, and we laughed about that earlier, saying that it's not so good for you guys because it works so well, it lasts so long, you're not selling as much, but well, dang, that's great for the customers that it lasts that long and that you can put it back in that bag, seal it up so that you can prolong it to use even more. Sure, the, va the value, the hidden value in, in the longevity is, uh, is a wonderful thing for the consumer. I'm, I'm finding that out more and more every day. Um, but some of the people that ended up purchasing our product early on were taking their halter or their head stall and hanging it on their stall door and hearing from the other people in the barn, why are there no flies going in your stall? And I'm calling my brother saying, this is not just a riding product. Yeah. This is a product that has great potential for you know, being in an enclosed area. And the more we messed around with this, the more we listened to people, we ended up developing new products. Um, we worked with uh, some farms 
over the course of last summer and had great feedback from veterinarians. If you go on our website, you can see some of the interviews and listen to some of the people who had a great exposure to the product last year. But just learning more and more about this, and as an industry, I don't think we just have enough experience with these pure oils because you just couldn't put them on the skin. Right. This product, in essence, gets them close enough mm -hmm. to where you get to experience the those results. If you look at what we're doing, um, you know, we're creating a cloud of protection. Okay. Wherever this band might be on the horse, you can imagine that with heat, there's going to be a, a certain size. And what we found is, you know, ranging from anywhere from 70 degrees to 80 degrees, somewhere in that nature, you're probably going to get two and a half to three feet of protection. So if you wear a nose band, you're going to get the full face, maybe up over the ears and maybe back to the middle of the neck. When it starts to really heat up, 80 degrees, 85, 90, what we've learned is that horses that are turned out, you know, half of their body is covered with this thing. When it gets to 95 and 100, which there were several days last summer at some of the test farms, we learned that horses were getting full body protection. And that's, that's really amazing. exciting, yeah, to, to think. And the products are all very reasonably priced. Um, Getting back to some of the some of the, the the reality of just getting the product off the ground, these are some funny stories. I um, I was I spent quite a bit of time in New Jersey last year, and, and some of the time was at, at a racetrack called Monmouth Park. And I went to uh, one trainer's barn, a, a well known trainer around the country, Nick Kanani. And Nick has uh, some wonderful people that work in his barn. And I brought a whole slew of samples over for them to to test. And and there were several different uh, several different blends that we were using. Okay. So, so I, I went to do my follow-up a couple of weeks later, and I had a, one of the grooms run up to me and say, there's no flies in the whole barn, man. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I thought that was kind of a, a, a big eye-opener yeah. for me. It's I, exciting when stuff like that happens, and you don't have to, you know, a little change like that in your barn is actually pretty substantial. Yeah, we, we've heard from that side of it, uh, in the in the barn, and then to to listen to someone who cares for brood mares, that's been doing it for 25 years or so. Um, I'm hoping that one of the guests that that uh, we get to talk to later from Lexington, Kentucky, a guy named Ronan Cunningham, he shares the story that at seven o'clock or eight o'clock at night, when it's 100 degrees during the day, the mares are exhausted. They're tired. He said with the fly armor, they were so well protected from the flies annoying them all day that they had energy. They were really? happier horses. And that to me was a real telling sign that we're dealing with something that's far different than fly sprays that, that get dirty, sweaty. And you know, once a horse gets dirty, sweaty, or wet. Yeah, it's just not so effective. Yeah, some of the simple things like you look out in the pasture and you he was sharing that you can tell the just the gentle sway of their tails instead of snapping at a, at a fly all day. Yeah. Um, and one of the ones that I enjoyed a lot too was that the horses that wear fly armor don't roll around in the dirt because they're not wanting to cover themselves to protect from the flies. It's and so interesting. All this time, I I thought they were just pigs. <laughs> Couldn't help that. Well, uh, you know, it's a reoccurring theme here on Horse Talk: keeping our horses happy and protecting them from the nuisance of flies all day. Everybody's seen it that the flies gather around a horse, um, their face, at their whole body, and so. Keeping them happy and protecting them from the flies is something that we all hope to do. And with the help of Fly Armor, it looks like we'll be doing a better job of it. I found Fly Armor at the Western States Horse Expo. It, Fly Armor was the great new find of my visit. I was actually there for work, so I had limited time, but I'm always looking. Bought the Fly Armor. What, ki what type of riding do you do? What is your discipline? Um, I'm an endurance rider, so when I ride my horse, I ride for long periods of time. And flies are often an issue. I, I ride on areas with very narrow trails and very steep drop-offs. You know, a horse. You have a lot of bugs out there. Well, not just that, but a horse that's shaking its head and not paying attention to where their feet are when you're going down a trail when there's a 1,500-foot drop-off down to the American River. You would rather have a horse paying attention to their job than paying attention to the nuisance about their head. Gotcha. So, uh, fly sprays don't work. I've never found another product that works. 
any kind of cover on their eyes doesn't work. Once again, I'd really like to have them be able to see where they're going. So Fly Armor is the first product I've actually been able to find that keeps bugs away while I'm on the trail. And you actually use this every day while you're riding. And, every and time I you ride. you got it at the beginning of June. Of I, and I just, a week ago, changed my inserts. So that's June, July, August. That's almost two months. So I, it's a great product. It lasts long. And key, key is that it works. All right, you heard it. It works. And it's fly armor. That's what we're talking about today on Horse Talk Live. We have the new product development, um, new business development developer. <laughs> what is it? What's your title? <laughs> Doesn't matter. <laughs> well, anyways, it's Charlie O'Hara. And Charlie's brother is the creator, or it was his idea for Fly Armor. And you're in your first real year of business right now, correct? Correct. After doing some substantial testing. Yeah, the product began in development in January of 2010. Okay. The patent applications were filed in April. We got our patent pending status right, right around the 1st of May, uh, middle of May, maybe last year. We did about three more months of testing, and August the 1st, we had a, what, what I'm calling a test selling season. We had about okay. 45 days where uh, I participated in all kinds of different events. Um, we as a company participated in all kinds of different events from tent sales with retail stores. We went to to uh, some, some of the major trade shows, uh, one in Pennsylvania, one over in Germany, um, began speaking with retailers around the world. Uh, so this is really our first go around. We've, we've now built merchandising to go in the store so that when you come in, you'll see a big display. Um, we've built uh, a presence on the internet where people can learn. They can listen to people like Pam Bailey mm -hmm. or, or Loretta and their experiences. There are some wonderful ones with a, a local veterinarian up in Lexington who spent a lot of time with us last summer evaluating our product, Dr. Larry Cottle. He's, uh, his insights are wonderful. I'm sure you'll enjoy those if you go to our website, which is flyarmor.net. Okay. Um, yeah. You got to like the net, you know, net. Flies can't get <laughs> through a net, sorry. That's good. That's a good way to remember it. Anyway, we're now just starting to roll out into all the major stores around the country. I say all of them. That's a little bit of a stretch. But some of the major stores, um, I would imagine, we'll have by June the 1st somewhere in the neighborhood of 1,500 retail stores. Okay. Well, I, um, I don't want to claim to be an expert, but any disease that a mosquito could carry, obviously the biggest one is West Nile virus. Mm -hmm. If we can keep mosquitoes away from contact on the animal, we're going to make a big difference for preventing West Nile from spreading. And among the places that we had a lot of testing done, last summer I, I snuck up on two trips. One was to Cape Cod where they have these bugs that look like helicopters coming after your horse. <laughs> they call them bombers. Um, I went there and I also went to Saratoga Springs where the one video with um, Loretta was taken. And the mosquito problem up there in the summer is overwhelming. Um, the reality of how well this product works I think is is portrayed best when the veterinarians on the backside who like to go fishing in the middle of the night came and asked if they could have some just to put around their necks while they're, while they're fishing, which leads into another point that yeah. Fly Armor is not just going to be a horse product. We uh -huh. have um, a wonderful line right now of three dog products. There will be a bunch of different products going into various fields for human use, from golf to tennis to mm -hmm. fishing, camping, just, you know, slots yeah. that sit right outside of the entrance as you go into your tent at night. That those, there's so many different applications for it. And I think one of the funniest things as we look back on this is John saying to me, I, I think we have a product that would work for riding. And when you share this, the amount of feedback that you get from the people, uh, it, it's been amazing. Uh, you're gonna see some new products that are coming in May mm -hmm. that were, born out of a retailer who just couldn't wait for us to develop them on our own. They wanted to develop them with us. And that's, that's kind of fun. It's, it's neat to have this much energy involved in a new right. product. And, you know, so much of what um, determines a success is the energy in the people mm -hmm. that work with the product and the people that have worked along with us. It's been a, a wonderful experience to, to be a part of that energy.
so excited to have something just besides fly spray and wipes and stuff. It really is just a whole new um, ball game. Yeah, it's it's fun. The very first event that I got to do, um, I had some friends that I had uh, gotten to know over the years with some products that I had worked with because I, I had worked with some really successful products in my career. And I, I had spoken to some friends that have uh, some wonderful retail stores in Pennsylvania and New Jersey. And uh, Mike Conforth, who's one of my best friends, introduced me to, or inter invited us to come and work at a, at a tent sale in the first week of August. And it was amazing, not only how many units we sold, you know, playing yeah. off of your point that this is something new and exciting, mm -hmm. um, but the response the next day, the second day of the sale, having mothers coming back saying, I put those on my kids, on the belt loops on my kids' pants to keep the bugs away. <laughs> you know, that certainly wasn't a part of the, the original plan. Okay, and others, it was really fun. One brought a trainer back saying, I put the fly armor on my horse and you could see the bugs coming right at the horse's head and then they stopped and went to my trainer's horse. <laughs> So I love had, it. I can't had, wait to try it out. Yeah, it was really fun to. Uh, I to think we have somewhere. another phone call. Um, a viewer has a question for us. Are you there? I am here. Jimmy. Here. Hey, Jimmy, do you have a question for Charlie? I sure do. Okay. Um, my question is can you put fly armor, you know, out in the pasture on fences or, you know, maybe outbuildings or whatever? Can you put it, you know? Okay, outside? not just on the horse. Can you do it? We heard you can put it in the stall. What about outside? Well, we have two different ways that you can do this. Um, and if you go to our website and watch one of the videos, you'll hear the, 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 the announcer talking about how these are great on water troughs. We developed oh. a new unit that it's got the same pocket and pad system on this side. And on the back, we have a, a hook loop Velcro on the back okay. and a piece of soft loop with adhesive on the back of it. So you can apply this to a stall door. You can apply it in a horse trailer. You can use it um, outside on any any basic hard or metal surface. It'll it'll attach. Doesn't need to be metal, but yeah, any hard surface. So that would give you a unit that would be stationary outside to protect a particular area. That's so smart. Um, you could put these on a feed tub, for instance, and keep the bugs okay. away while the horse is eating the eating their food. Um, in addition to that, this is a a product that we just finished. This is what we're calling a mane and tail band. It has a string. It, it works almost the way a, a luggage tag would work. Okay. To work into a tail or a mane. You're going to take basically a, a small amount of the hair and, and attach a rubber band to it. Okay. You're going to slide the, 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 str the rope through that hair, pull the pocket through, and on the back you have a soft loop and a hook Velcro attachment to wrap it around the tail. Now you've got the scent going back and forth whenever the tail yeah. moves, and you've also got one up in the mane. So that helps you get the product attached to the horse that's turned out. Um, yeah. If you're not wearing, if happy. the horse doesn't wear a, a halter. Very does, good. Does that answer your question, Jimmy? I think he's gone, but okay. I, it, I mean, I understood it. It's great you can't put it on the buildings and where the horses are, you know, around and. Um, get protection all over the place, not only on the horse, but in your barn as well. Uh, we're going to take a short break. We'll be back with more and get to know a little bit more about fly armor and see some photos of how it's used. And so stick around. We'll be back with more on Horse Talk Live on Rural TV. Thanks. Welcome back. I'm Lizzie Iverson, and you're watching Horse Talk Live. We're learning more about a product to keep your horse happy, keep you happy as well. It's called fly armor. And it's kind of an, in, an, an innovation in uh, fly protection. It's not a spray. It's not a wipe. Um, Charlie, tell us what it is for those who are just joining us. Well, it's a very simple way of housing the pure oils, the essential oil, citronella and cedar wood. Okay. And the combination not only is potent to keep flies away, but the combination of these oils are durable. They can last a while. And that's a really major breakthrough when you consider a horse can spend 24 hours a day outside mm -hmm. to have something that you can simply apply to the horse once every four weeks. Um, yeah. And really all, all, all you'd be doing after four weeks is replacing the, uh, the, re the replaceable inserts. You're, yeah, you're putting so we don't have to deal with in. gallons of liquid and things yeah. like that. And, and we do have a, a wide array of products right now. I'm going to show you um, what we have uh, 
uh, the first one that I had shown earlier is, is called a brow band. The brow band um, has its Velcro attachments on the ends. Mm -hmm. um, it features two different uh, single pad pockets. Um, all of the products on the backing I had mentioned earlier has mm -hmm. a, you know, a non-leaching uh, plastic three-layered product that keeps the, the tack or the animal skin protected. I'm going to show um, a halter that I've actually equipped with two different types of product on it. One of the things that you want to remember is when it's 70 degrees, you might need a little bit more product. Okay, because the hotter it is, the better it works. And vice versa. When it's cooler temperatures, if it's 65, you might still have flies. Right. But you won't have the intensity or size of the cloud okay. affecting and protecting the horse. So I, I, I equipped a, a basic halter with what we call our cheek pieces or our cheek bands. And these can also be used as a nose band on a foal. Okay. Um, they can be used uh, on Shetland ponies and little horses. Um, the, the, the nose band of the halter here, I've, I've got what we call a pole band, this same unit, and these attach from the back. Okay. You can actually apply this to the pole band. A lot of the horses... Okay, up over their ears. Yeah. A, a okay. lot of the farm management people, especially the thoroughbred farms that we worked with, they, they didn't want to have the product be seen, be in, in, the, in the view, the line of sight for the horse, so they put them on the, on the crown piece. They were out of sight, out of mind. The horse didn't even yeah, know they so were there. Yeah, so close to their eyes. Didn't give them the opportunity to mess with them. But that's um, that's what it looks like on the on the halter. Now, has a horse ever shown irritation in their eyes or anything um, from well, it being close to their face? Well, you would think that because if you're around it, you can smell and and feel that vapor. We've just had the opposite happen. The veterinarians who have looked at the horses that have. Uh, been using our product over the course of the summer in the hottest months are saying, you know, the, the beauty is there is no tearing at all. Um, and normally you get horses pretty much crying all summer yeah. because the bugs are, are all over their eyes. And that's why fly masks have become such a big deal is to keep the flies out of the eyes. Well, if you don't use those, you'll know that horses are tearing all the time. And in one of the videos, one of the interviews that we did with Dr. Cottle, he shares about how remarkable it is that the horses don't have a tear film developing underneath their eyes. Huh. Anyway, so okay. there's how it looks on a halter. Okay. Um, the, one, the unit that I had shown a little bit earlier, the boot stall and tack band, the one that has the Velcro, Velcro. that you can okay. attach, you can also use it on a, any type of typical sports medicine boot. That's very cool. Um, while the horse is in full speed, obviously flies aren't going to be messing with them, but when they're stationary, gosh, they find them, especially yeah. if they're sweaty. So that's a, a real nice feature to have. Here is our, our most popular product is a nose band. And this, this uh, nose band, like the brow band, attaches on the ends. And it features pockets that hold up to two strips in each. We okay. call this an extra strength nose band. Um, very simple to use. And a lot of people will use this actually as a brow band as well because they would like the added protection. I've found that once it hits 90 degrees, People don't want to put two sticks in there. They just want to put one. So if you're in an area where maybe it's going to be 70 degrees a lot, this might be the, the product to purchase okay. initially. Um, one of our newer products um, that you can see on the web is a, is a unit that wraps around a riding helmet. And we suggest that the, the, that the pockets and the pads go at the, hind, the rear end of the, of the helmet. Okay. But you can see... Um, it's adjustable and, and it fits nice and snug on the horse on the riding helmet. Okay. Um, the the unit that I showed you that's on the on the nose of the halter, we also make in dog packaging and it's wonderful for dogs. Yeah. And if you think the product is you know effective on horses, you should see what it does for dogs that spend a lot of time outdoors. We don't recommend that you let the dog in the house with this on. You might have a home that smells like a citronella candle for a month. <laughs> But uh, it's, um, it's really convenient and wonderful for use on dogs. Okay. We've also had a couple of different co-branding efforts out there. And I, when I say co-brand, I mean we're working with another manufacturer. In this case, we have coming in the next, uh, this is kind of a sneak preview. Okay. They, they, they market and sell uh, breast collars now. And basically what they've done is they've applied a landing strip, if you will, for the Perfect. pockets. So on a breast collar or... Um, or on a cinch. Very and the, product, the product looks good on a horse too, which is important. Um, 
to, to most of the consumers. You don't yeah. want to have something that looks tacky Let's on your Let's look horse. at some of those photos that we have so folks can see what it does look like and that it's not um, taking up too much space, getting in the way. Uh, you know, it's just kind of there. It just becomes part of your tack. So let's look at those photos. There it's on. Yeah, that's a brow band that's actually attached onto a halter. So you don't have to just use a brow band if you're okay. riding. That's a, a unit that is used on the dog, on a dog collar. Okay, then There's the, the extra strength uh, nose band on a horse. And that's... Uh, that's John's dog, John and Robin's dog, uh, <laughs> Dribble. He's oh. our poster child. Yeah, looking good. There's a nose band and a brow band from out at a ranch in California. That's a pole band. Okay. There's another shot of a brow band with Monty Schwanevelt at Schwanevelt Ranch in California. Um, that's also a, a pole band. Pole right behind the ears there. There are sports medicine boots with, uh, with the pockets on. That's great. Okay. You know, uh, in one of the videos also, um, one of the testimonials, the lady, the gal was talking about how her horses can perform better because they're not focused on the pesky flies and everything. I think that's huge. You know, sometimes your horse gets so distracted because it's shaking its head or stamping its feet. I'm annoyed by that. So it's... You know, you can have it there all the time on your tack and not have to worry about running back and getting something to reapply and just well, 24 7. Cer certainly in the show ring, certainly out on the trail. Um, Pam Bailey, one of the, the testimonial video, she's up there 1,500 feet above uh, the American River, uh, you know, competing. I couldn't imagine having my horse throwing their head around <laughs> <laughs> thinking, oh my gosh, yeah, that's not a long good. way down. Yeah. But, I would say that the most um, possessed of any endorsement that I received was uh, a farm manager in Kentucky who preps yearlings for the yearling sale. This is two to three months of training with a young horse, teaching them how to stand for a long time right. and be evaluated. And the training goes on over the course of the summer. And this particular yearling manager was sharing that their ability to stand well can, you know, be the difference between, you know, 10,000 or 100,000 or 500,000 or a million. And um, when you think that a, a $22 item can bring that kind of a, uh, of a, of a difference yeah. in, in, in value to the horse. That's pretty big. Yeah, it's pretty fun. Pretty so exciting. Take us back to that topic. Is this something that uh, everyone can afford? Yes. We, we had, I think, four basic goals with each product. We want to make sure that the product is safe. We want to make sure the product is effective. We want to make sure the product is comfortable. And lastly, we want to make sure the product is affordable. Or we're just going to be a flash in the pan. The reality is when you look at the product and what you get for your money, mm -hmm. um, it's very reasonable. I like to use that word reasonable because if you apply a little reason to this product, $22.99 is our suggested retail. Inside of it, you're getting... Inside of the kit, you're getting two of our replacement packs. Okay. These replacement packs, the retail value is $6.99. So $14 of that $22.99 is for the actual product that's going to help repel. Mm -hmm. And you're not going to have to buy a new one of these. Right. I'm sure this will last a full season. Um, so many of the people that come in contact with the product initially go ahead and buy product, buy these for the whole season because they're just so reasonable. And one thing that we're finding to be a, a, an exciting issue for us right now, it's no fun to deal with gas prices. <laughs> um, that's not the fun part, I'm sorry. But, uh, and it's no, no more fun for me because I have to fill up my gas tank every day or a lot of days. Um, it's the reality of freight. When you look at mm -hmm. freighting gallons of fly spray from... Right. from uh, you know, your purchases, that's adding a lot of cost. This product, we can ship a whole lot of product in a priority mail that's envelope. So I'm just really thrilled that uh, we have a product that is so reasonably priced. Um, one last thing that's important mm -hmm. to us, too, is right now, Fly Armor is an American-made okay. product only. Oh, okay. All, that's the, piece, all the pieces and parts that go into the product 
our uh, our American made and I'm really excited about it. Okay. That. Well, we're excited to have you here. Visit the website flyarmor.net and we'll see you next time for more on Horse Talk Live on Rural TV.